it is a part of you and it's your whole style put together. Yeah, it's a real, real, real concoction, real melting pot in London of different cultures, yeah, you know, and um, it's, it's great. It made the community come more together because, you know, everyone meeting at the barber shop, you know, and they, they're interacting and stuff like that. Well, it's, it's kind of the hub of the community. It is, it's especially every, every, when everyone... Every male comes here to get a haircut in, in the community. People's hair is important to them because it's the only accessory you can't take off at night. So you've been working here long then, mate? Um, it's just about 10 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But you've been, you've obviously not been barbering 10 months. No, I've been uh, barbering for 25 years. Crikey, 25 yeah, that's years, a long time. If not a bit more, actually. I enjoy, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy um, making people feel good. Mm -hmm. um, just, just, I've always loved the job. Well, one thing I love about here is that I don't work weekends. So I get Saturdays off, which might not sound that much to you lot, but that is quite important. And um, it's got more of a vibe. You meet all different people from different countries, just all different backgrounds. And you can be surprised by so many people here as well. The reason I based myself in Hackney was because I lived in Victoria Park in Hackney. And most of my clients were in the area and my friends were in the area. And so my client base was based here. I chose Hackney because I thought it was a good choice of customers who would be in Hackney and in the environment where we would get a lot of more mixed customers coming. It was the first multicultural barbershop or salon, but um, as you can see, we've done things different from when we opened 12 years ago. Most barber shops, you see people selling shoes, clothes, DVDs. And we came in there, we set up a computer system. We've had that for like 10 years. It represents a good, a good way in, in Dalston because um, it made the community come more together. Because, you know, everyone meeting at the barber shop, you know, and they, they're interacting and stuff like that. So you have a very good impact on, on the, on the um, community in Hackney. Well, it's, it's kind of the hub of the community. It is, it is especially every, when every, everyone... Every male comes here to get a haircut in, in the communities. They've got a lot of respect. The community have a lot of respect for us inside there and what we've done. You know, we've obviously got loads of respect for the community. You know, we try to give back as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a good place to come and chill. Well, you, you get a feel for things. Yeah. You get a feel for, for, for atmosphere. Here's a community, a working community. So you get a feel with London to get in a vibe, if it's buzzing, if things are upturning, you know, financial markets make a big deal here. You see how things are, people get really excited. Why this year, people getting really excited. I think it's the mm -hmm. first time in about five years people expecting a pay rise and it's a bit of a buzz about London. It's great. The haircut are important because it make you look more refined, you know, you look good, you, you know, you have a nice shape, you're going out and, you know, along with your, your, your dress code, you know, it make you look more refined at, at the time. So I have a very um, personal relationship with a lot of my clients. I spend more time with many of my clients than I do with my mo most close friends. Um, I see some people every three or four weeks for at least an hour. So I know them very well and they'll open up to me about all sorts of problems. And it works both ways. If I have a problem or boy trouble, I'll tell everyone and hopefully get the right answer. <laughs> it represents um, maybe rehab for some clients to actually come and just relax and forget everything for an hour, a couple of hours, depending on what treatments they're having done. And I think it's also, it can feel like just a sanctuary and they like to come in and maybe just I don't know, talk about day-to-day -day things instead of talking about what they're doing for their work. I'm not entirely sure. It's just kind of, for me, it depends on how I feel at the time. Like, I either get a dramatic haircut because I want to look different to everyone else or 
feel different and everything else and then otherwise I'll just grow it out and be started all over again. My hair gives me the access to fully self-express myself. I'm a very expressed person so it is about personality for me and living life to the full. Working in all different places in London. I've never seen so many we've, different We've people. taken a lot of haircuts yeah. from kind of black American culture. Mm -hmm. The patterns, the lines, the real, the fades. That wasn't happening before. Yeah. Before that, and then and then you know the guys just come over here. You mm -hmm. know, let's say when I worked there, it was like Brixton that really come in the fade. I mean, I, I lived fade. in Leicestershire for years, and it was pretty standard. The haircuts people you would have, not they weren't bad haircuts, but people would just sort of have a standard sort of quite a lot of the lads look the same and stuff mm. where I think people around and about London want to maybe stand out but sometimes not so if you're not so wacky and that sort of thing mm. but some people obviously really go for it. I don't think society's really changed that much or we haven't really changed that much we're the same people as you can see the, the shop now still doesn't look dated 12 years later so we haven't really changed that much we still you've come in and seen it the first time and think wow to us, we're not seeing WOW no more. We're seeing, we need a change now. But if you haven't seen it before, come from the outside, you see, hold on a minute, this is nice. But for us, we've just been the same for 12 years. So I don't think we've changed that much. You just go with the times. When I first started hairdressing, it was a lot more structured. And people liked styles that were a lot sharper. And their colours were a lot more dramatic. Now, um, people are going for a more natural look and they kind of, want their hair to look as though they haven't had their hair done. Yeah, things, things have definitely changed. There is definitely a mishmash now. Yeah. You know, like say, you I mean, say you've had skin fades yeah. now, Dan, you can't hair for a while and you have skin fades now. Skin fades weren't a thing back in the, back in the day. No. But that is a, that's a mixture from it's the a, It's a culture thing, fades. isn't it? Yeah, I, saw, I, I saw it on Mad Men and sort of, I think that sort of all the different programmes, I mean, it's not just a case of you get media from one part of the world now with the internet and different bits and bobs and YouTube and stuff. You see mm. so many different cultures and styles and images and that sort of like want a bit of it sometimes. Well, yeah, you go, you, you know, you can go from, from let's say from Cissé to Beckham mm -hmm. to a kind of, you know, kind of mix of that Arsenal young lad, Tring Pong with his kind of thing and Ashley Cole with his Mohican and mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's all a mishmash. No one has, why, well, okay, you're from that background you now have that haircut. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is a total, total, it's a total mix, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know and, and vice versa, you know, you get the black guys with the Mohicans now and the fade in, that's your cold, which, you know, that's kind of mixed from a punk era. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, back in the day, punks was like, oh wow, he's weird, he had a big pink spike over. Yeah. And yet now, it's a common place to see people with a Mohican haircut. Yeah. And it's not for, oh, he's, he's a, when I was a kid, you know, if you'd had a skinhead, you could mm -hmm. a thug. Yeah, I mean, when, just when, clean, it's just yeah, a clean haircut. When I, when I was younger, if you had a parted haircut, if you had a parted in your hair, you were considered a bit of a geek, a bit of a goon, to be honest. Yeah. And, and so for now, to people to have that and it to be common practice, I think it's really cool. People's hair is important to them because it's the only accessory you can't take off at night. Yeah, some of my clients have been coming to see me since I was about 20, so I'm 27 now. And um, to get new ones, you might offer promotions in the salon or it could be friends that have recommended someone else to them and offers and deals and stuff like that. That always helps. I am very open with everyone, but especially new customers. Um, I think because most of my clients are friends of friends, they already have been told kind of what to expect. Yes, we, we have a very good relationship with clients. We approach your clients in the right way. When they come to the shop, we give them a warm welcome and, um, you know, make them happy and stuff like that. So, you know, when they get that kind of feeling from the barber, uh, they, they, they go out and they, they, they spread the word and they bring a lot more customers because, you know, customers like to be happy when they come to the shop. They come to get the haircut and be cut, get a quiet and a peaceful rest and get, you know, so. What I love, love about here, everyone focuses on the, on the client. You know, you can be you're like a confident here. You know, everything we speak about will be um, just between us. People, you know, I hear about marriage breakups, about affairs, I hear about everything about the kid. You know, you hear cool. a lot of stuff. So you hear as um, as someone that people can talk to and relate to, as well as yeah. as well as being. I think you're just relaxed, aren't you, when you're in a barbershop? You just sort of 
it's half an hour away from the office, isn't it? You can just chill out and, yeah. I think I seem quite approachable, so if I feel they're shy or something, then I do just kind of, you might be a bit kinder or treat them a bit differently, but then, I don't know, I was just cutting this guy's hair upstairs and he comes in and takes the mick out of me for half an hour and then leaves, to be honest. So I think he likes that I can joke around with him. And then some of my ladies, they just, I don't know. I think it is your personality, but then it's also, it has to be what you do and they have to be happy with what you do as well. Yeah. A lot of good friends has brought to the community. It's brought a lot of people that, you know, they haven't really got that much and then they see us and we're an inspiration for them, which is, which is really good, you know, especially the youngsters. In the future, hopefully, we can start an academy and get some of the youngsters that are doing nothing with themselves, but they've got a lot of love for people inside the shop. So I would love to bring them in and get, get to teach them how to cut hair and get them to do what we've done. The youngsters come out and, and decide to do barbering. It can be a good asset for them because barbering is a very quiet job and it's a very more um, understanding, you, know, you get more understanding from different type of people. Yeah, it is more um, white Caucasian people that we have, but then we do have a few Afro-Caribbean clients, but I find the ones that will come to us are more the women that have already had their hair straightened and stuff like that, and because they feel like we could manage that, but maybe we couldn't manage, you know, if they have an afro or something like this, because, well, you don't have to be trained in that either. And to be honest, I, I've never been trained in that or the braiding and all that stuff as well, so. Barbering is not Afro-Caribbean no more, like, but uh, uh, Afro barbers nowadays is not an Afro barbers no more. It is, it's, it's totally diverse. Most barber shops will tell you that now. Multicultural. It's very multicultural now. You know, it's you can't even call and say who's got the most. We've got a barber inside here who's probably does seventy percent more Asian. His his client his clientele, you know. So it's yeah, you you somewhere that dominantly black, you're gonna have about ten barber shops anyway. You know, so maybe so, but in a in just a normal area, now nah, it will it will be um it'll be totally diverse. This is a more multicultural area. It's a multicultural anyway. area. You understand, but. You find black barbers or Afro Caribbean or whatever barbers, they give you the best style. So most of the youths then would want to come for that style. You'd have white, but black, I just Asian. Yes and no to that because no. now barbers now are not just black and. No, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just using that as a reference to say. There's six of us in there. There's you, only two black guys. You've got two mixed guys. You've got yeah, two but, Asian guys. Yeah, multicultural. So multicultural. They've learnt the style from Afro Caribbean barbers, face this, that, you know, yeah. fancy stuff. So that's what, that's what I'm that's it's come from. It has come from. You understand what I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, it has come from from Afro. Because if you stuff. go to the barbers down the end, down the top of the where the road is, you just get a straight haircut, and that's it for a fiver. So you know what I mean? If you come here, you come here anyway. You come here on a Saturday. You see the football. We're all hyped up for that. You understand? So. It's, the Barbers is the hub of the community.